Whoa, what the flood happened in 2024? A wild year in so many different ways, uh, but in the world of water cycle restoration, it was a really incredible year. I think 2025 might be the year that water cycle restoration goes mainstream. It's been incredible over this past year to see how many different people are now talking about these things from all different walks of life. For a long time, I've been having this experience that when I explain what I do, people are really fascinated by it. Whether it's someone in an elevator going up to a hotel, my taxi driver, someone that I'm sitting next to on a train or an airplane, because these are simple, logical things that it's really easy for people to understand and value. And when you get clear in that, you become very powerful in being able to push and move these projects forward. For me, the most rewarding part of the year that's gone by was getting to connect with our community month after month, year after year. Through these professional development sessions that we run for alumni, every month, every four weeks, we're connecting with the most dedicated people all around the world to water cycle restoration. These are the people doing it professionally, doing it on their own, doing it as advocates, and working consistently every day in that direction. The really important part of all of this is momentum. A little bit of progress every single day. And so having this group of people from around the world that you're held accountable to really helps build that momentum, moving forward a little bit, day after day, month after month, year after year. And it's incredible to see what people have already accomplished in just a short period of time. Some of our students are working for high-end luxury hotels. Some of our students are working for the highest end vineyards and wineries in Italy. I mean, incredible stuff that's happening so quickly. Once you get clear in what you have to offer, it just attracts the people who are ready to accept that. And it's a really important part of the course and a really important part of these professional development sessions. Inevitably, there's gonna be lots of challenges that come up. There's gonna be things that happen and it's only through discipline and dedication and continuing to move forward with that momentum that you can really overcome these challenges. And it's so helpful to have a group of people to navigate these with to have someone like myself to provide some mentorship with all of my experience working in all these different situations, but also the other students to get their input, to get their experience, to share what's working, what's not, what kinds of ways can we have these conversations? What kinds of ways can we move these projects forward? And it's really incredible to know that what you're doing is being complimented by somebody on the other side of the world, on the other side of the country, on the other side of your town, all these different connections that are being made. It's really powerful and empowering. You know, a lot of us don't necessarily have a lot of people in our communities that are interested in this kind of thing. Maybe we have a friend or two that's Maybe we're lucky and we have a community, but a lot of us are spread out and a lot of our immediate physical community might not yet be aware and active about these things. And so it's so incredible, so heartwarming, so fulfilling, so rewarding to get to connect with the most dedicated people around the world about their journey with water cycle restoration. This includes the projects that they have going on, the challenges and struggles, and it's really incredible to see how far people are taking this so quickly. All sorts of different diverse partners that are really looking at the situation that we have now and saying, how do we do water cycle restoration? We have these challenges that we're facing. That's the other side of what the flood happened in 2024. We saw some horrific events happening around the world and we call these natural disasters, but they're not natural. They're a result of what we've done to the landscape. It's a pretty natural consequence that if you drain all the wetlands, you remove all the forests, you put in these concreted hard landscapes, you're gonna create a lot of runoff and that runoff needs to go somewhere. 
But one of the really shocking things is that we're also losing that water's ability to help cool and regulate our local climate. The amount of water that we're draining from the earth every year, taking out of the small water cycle, the amount of energy that that has the capacity to absorb in terms of heat around the surface of the earth when it undergoes photosynthesis through plants, the amount of energy each year that that water we're draining away has the ability to absorb is roughly 10 times the whole production of all of our energy as a species in the world. And so this is really a huge amount of potential that we're not capitalizing on. And people are seeing when they do capitalize on it, how quickly the results come. And so it's incredible to get to connect with these people over time and see how they progress. To see our students in Chile starting to do large scale restoration projects. To see our students in Europe taking on all sorts of different arrangements, helping landowners better steward their resources. Our students in Africa and Australia and all around the world are starting to engage with people in this type of work. And it is, brings me so much hope and joy to see something we only hoped would happen when we set out. And already a few years in, it's taking place. In this year that's gone by, it's really hard to imagine that it's all happened in just one year. It, has just been wild. We had sold out workshops all over the place. We had a period of about five months in the summer of just seven days a week, nonstop work. If we weren't working on projects, we were teaching or leading workshops on the weekend. We had our first intensive workshop with students of our core course where people got time on an excavator, time getting their hands dirty with all of the different actions. We had our first hands-on workshop in Europe, and it was really incredible to see how quickly people got their first projects after these workshops. Because it's not rocket science. It's simple, simple stuff. We can do it really easily. We just have to start. It's not enough to just know about it or think about it. We have to actually do it. And that's what we've really been empowering people to take on for themselves. And we have all of these amazing initiatives happening. Students helping to change policy, students working with change makers and different connected individuals all around the world. And more and more students are able to go full time with this work. They're taking on bigger and more ambitious projects every year. And it's incredible to see how just a little bit of mentorship, a little bit of direction from people that have experienced themselves helps push these people in the right direction so that they grow so much quicker than ever I was able to. You know, what took me five or 10 years, people are doing in two or three years now, as far as establishing a reputation, a way to work with people, and an offering to give to the world that really makes sense for them and the people that they're offering it to. And so our students are really leading the way, changing the narrative. When we set out a few years ago, you search water cycle restoration in Google and you didn't get much. You got actually a lot of information about restoring buildings from water damage. Uh, and now when you do that, you get something very different. And it's really incredible to see more and more every year people become aware. I think when we look back on 2024, it is going to be a really pivotal point in our development as a species, I hope. It's really a year that a lot of people from all over started to see water as having this huge potential to positively impact the future that we leave other generations on this planet. And so it was really incredible to have just these constant check-ins where we really develop a community of people that are doing this, that are actualizing it with their hands. And there's so much we can learn from each other in different types of people, from people in the latter portion of their life, helping be advocates and stewards of their own landscape and raise awareness of this in the community, teach future generations to the very young that are just starting their career, just starting their profession and realizing I can do something that makes a really meaningful, positive difference. I can earn my livelihood that way and I can really have a lot of fulfillment in that career path. 
young families that are getting set up on land that want to make the right logical decisions for that landscape. They don't want to fight their land anymore. They want to work with nature, with all of the potential that we have available to us. And so over this past year, we were working on projects with all kinds of different partners from Department of Defense all the way down to uh, individual farmers and landowners. We were part of a think tank with UN Water and the Water Caucus. Uh, we finished this van that I'm in right now, a big project for us in 2024 to have an upgrade to our living arrangements while we're working on all of these projects all over the place. We had workshops in the West, workshops in Europe. In the middle of all of this craziness, we went to Mozambique to do a water training with 15 water MVPs in a remote village in a conservation area a little bit larger than Switzerland. And it was really incredible to see, you know, we had these big language challenges going from English to broken Portuguese to the local dialects before the ladies of the group would actually be following along. And so it was like a really bad telephone game where we were corroding a lot of the information as it was going at each step. But as soon as we started working in the earth, people started getting it really quickly because they're already living so close to the earth. When you're making your home out of mud bricks, you understand a little bit more intimately what clay is and what kind of impact it is and where to find it. And so once we started doing the actions, instead of talking about them, people picked them up really quickly. And in one day with a small group of people, we were able to make the first water body. After we left, they built 25 more water bodies with the help of a number of people in the village. And so it was really incredible to see from these remote villages in the middle of nowhere in Africa, where people have almost nothing, to big businesses, fancy hotels with rugs worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, to the United States military, all of these different people need and want water cycle restoration. And we can change and positively impact their lives, our planet, our climate, all by taking these actions onto ourselves. And so it's really important time for capacity building. These initiatives need leadership with experience. They need people who have started to do the tasks, who have learned the lessons from nature, who can achieve results so that these projects actually move forward and succeed. And that's why it's so important for us, everything that we're doing here at Water Stories. We really appreciate you guys being part of our community, following along. We're testing out this style of video, so let me know down in the comments what you like, what you don't, what you want to hear about. Uh, we have so many different projects and examples, and we want to know from you what's helpful, what's going to help you on this journey, what's going to give you that next bit of knowledge, experience, wisdom to push you forward in your development. With all this crazy summer, you know, some unfortunate circumstances as well, uh, tore my MCL being really stupid. You know, it just goes to show it's whenever you let your guard down that bad things happen. After a long, intensive project, everything had gone really well. Driving the excavator to where it was going to get picked up, getting out of the excavator, just not paying attention, slipped and tore my MCL in the process. So that was a good humbling experience and wake up call and just reminder of how you know, big and powerful these things are and how we need to be so present and diligent when working with them to actually have a positive impact. It's easy to say you're having a positive impact. It's really hard to actually have that maximal positive impact through and through with everything that you do. That's why it takes that full attention and presence with where you're working. And so after all that craziness, then tearing my MCL, we went to Europe, had incredible experiences all around. Uh, we shared a video about that previously. We got home just in time for the holidays, spend a bit of time with family. And now we're really gearing up for 2025. I think this is gonna be a big year ahead for all of us. I hope you will really look towards water this year. What can you give back? 
Water gives us so much in this world. It's the easiest thing to take for granted. So what can we do on behalf of water, on behalf of nature, to have a positive impact on the systems that are giving us everything that we know and love? And so if this sounds interesting, I'd love for you to join us in the Water Stories community. We're sharing about these types of things all the time. We're helping one another figure out how to do this in the world. You know, it's easy to look at what works right, but there's oh, so many challenges along the way. And it's only the people who persevere and have discipline and dedication through those challenges. But I'll tell you one thing that helps a whole lot is having a group of people to talk to about all of it. So that you're not alone working through these challenges. You have friends from all around the world helping support you to get through these challenges. And it's really incredible to see how quickly people move forward. I think it's really important to build and grow these connections between each other. Ultimately, we're doing this for other humans, for each other, for our non-human relatives on this planet, to make a better world, but it really helps to have community to do it with, to have that support, to know that someone in Chile really values what you're doing and has their full support and effort behind you, or somebody in Australia wants to see you succeed and have their own projects and are pushing their own things forward to help build this better future that we all want and are striving for. And so it just brings me so much fulfillment. It's so rewarding to get to help these very dedicated, amazing people all around the world as we work together to make a better common future. What the flood happened in 2024, a whole lot of good, a whole lot of amazing things. We're really looking forward to the year ahead with all of you guys. If this sounds like something you want to be a part of, I hope you'll join us in the Water Stories community, in the core course, because it's really amazing just the positive energy that can come from connecting with this group of people again and again, over time, supporting one another. We really can understand that we're not working in silos, we're working together and together this movement really has power.